Stand by for a moment, because the president is speaking on this issue in the East Room. He's part of the resistance within the Trump administration. This, person, this is what we have to deal with. And, you know, the dishonest media, because you people deal with it as well as I do. But it's really a disgrace. Uh, I, I will say this. Nobody has done what this administration's done in terms of getting things passed and getting things through. A article was just printed, just came out a few minutes ago. Trump breaks the record for budget gridlock wins, scores big wins. So for 20 years, it's a 20-year record. For 20-year record, they call it the fouled up budget gridlock and scores big win. Here's your thing. So this just came out. So in 20 years, uh, it hasn't been like it is now. It's we broke, we broke it. That's just really positive stuff. And then in addition to that, point after point after point, if you look, uh, almost 4 million jobs created since the election, of which many of you Americans now employed than ever recorded in our history. So we have more people working today than at any point ever in our history. We've created 400,000 manufacturing jobs. Manufacturing jobs are growing at the fastest pace in more than 30 years. Economic growth last quarter was 4.2 percent. And as you people know, it was headed down big. And it was a low number, very low number. It would have been, in my opinion, it would have been less than zero. It was heading to negative numbers. New employment claims recently hit a, a think of that, the unemployment picture in the country is the best it's been in 49 years. African-American unemployment lowest in the history of our country. Asian American unemployment lowest in the history of our country. Hispanic American unemployment lowest in the history of our country. I mean, I'm just looking at these just point after point. Uh, under my administration, veterans unemployment reached its lowest in many, many years. The, uh, let's see, almost 3.9 million Americans have been lifted off food stamps just since my election. Then you go into all of the benefits that we got from the tax cuts. All of you people benefited tremendously from the tax cuts. Thank you, sir. You go into regulation cuts. You go into right to try. Right to try is where you have the right, if a person's terminally ill, you have a right to go and try and see whether or not uh, a drug that's uh, not approved yet can be used and utilized. They didn't allow that. A point after point, of getting rid of the individual mandate, the most unpopular thing there is in Obamacare, coming up with new health care plans. We've never had a period, even if you look at the Olympics, got the Olympics, the uh, World Cup just got, you just saw them, they were in my office, got the World Cup. Nobody has, and we have started the wall, nobody has ever done in less than a two-year period what we've done. So when you tell me about some anonymous source within the administration, probably who's failing and probably here for all the wrong reasons. Now, and the New York Times is failing. If I weren't here, I believe the New York Times probably wouldn't even exist. And, and someday, and someday when I'm not president, which hopefully will be in about six and a half years from now, <laughs> The New York Times and CNN and all of these phony media outlets will be out of business, folks. They'll be out of business because there'll be nothing to write and there'll be nothing of interest. So nobody has done what this administration has done. And I agree, it's different from an agenda, which is much different than ours. And it's certainly not your agenda, that I can tell you. Thank you. It's about open borders. It's about letting people flee into our country. It's about a disaster and crime for our country. So they don't like Donald Trump, and I don't like them because they're very dishonest people. Remember this also about the New York Times. When I won, they were forced to apologize to their subscribers. They wrote a letter of apology. It was the first time anybody's ever done it because they covered the election incorrectly. 
So if the failing New York Times has an anonymous editorial, can you believe it? Anonymous, meaning gutless, a gutless editorial. Uh, we're doing a great job. The poll numbers are through the roof. Our poll numbers are great. And guess what? Nobody is going to come close to beating me in 2020 because of what we've done. We've done more than anybody ever thought possible in — it's not even two years. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, the president uh, had a meeting with sheriffs from around the country, the East Room of the White House. He made a statement to them, and then, of course, he was reacting to this extraordinary op-ed in the New York Times, blasting him an op-ed entitled, quote, I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. Uh, an anonymous person wrote this uh, article of the president really, really exploding in anger as a result of this article. I quickly want to go back to Caitlin Collins over at the White House. Caitlin, uh, so we got some reaction from the White House in, in the person of the president himself to this extraordinary article. That's right, Wolf. We had not heard from administration officials, but there the president himself came out to this event. And as we were just talking about, the president was 30 minutes late to this event, leading to some speculation that he had had time to read this op-ed and why he was so late to that event with those sheriffs. But you saw the president walk in there and he had a piece of paper in his hand that he pulled out and he went over uh, after this announcement, denouncing the New York Times for publishing this op-ed, which is written by an anonymous top official in the Trump administration, anonymous to you and I, Wolf, not anonymous to those New York Times editors who said that they knew who it is, the identity of the person who wrote this op-ed. But the president clearly uh, touched a nerve with this. He was calling it gutless, going after the New York Times for publishing something with an anonymous source, uh, and then listing off, in a bizarre sense, his list of accomplishments here. Uh, so far that he in the time that he's been in office and then going on to say that he's going to win re-election in 2020 to the laughter of some of those people who were in the room. But Wolf, what this was was a raw sense of emotion from this president who was clearly irritated that someone uh, who he said was gutless, but someone that had the guts to go and write this op-ed saying that they are working in this administration only because they want to thwart what they say are the president's worst inclinations. Clearly, this is something that frustrated the president, a president who often rails against people who tell outlets information but don't use their name, even though that's something the president did before he came to the White House. But he was, you know, a, a rant is essentially probably the best way to put it there, Wolf, in front of this room, in front of these sheriffs in a presidential event, uh, going off just about an hour and a half after The New York Times published this op-ed, saying it was gutless and listing his accomplishments, essentially saying to ignore this and that there is someone who he says is a member of the resistance in his administration working against him that wrote this op-ed, Wolf. Yeah, he was certainly ranting. Uh, he was clearly angry at this 800 or 900 word article, this op-ed in The New York Times. He even seemingly more angry about this than the Bob Woodward nearly 400 or 500 page book uh, that officially hasn't even been released yet. It's supposed to be released next Tuesday, but uh, whole chunks of it, of course, we know about. Caitlin, we're going to get right, back to Wolf. you. Uh, stand by for a moment. Uh, you know, Jamie Gangel, you've actually read read the book. And the president was ranting. It sort of underscored, and he was saying all sorts of wild things, uh, several, several of those things clearly not true. Uh, but uh, in the op-ed, the senior official writes this, and I'm going to read it once again about off the rails. Meetings with him according to this official, veer off topic and off the rails. He engages in repetitive rants, and his impulsiveness results in half-baked, ill-informed, and occasionally reckless decisions that have to be walked back. Uh, it sounds like what he was doing right there. And it also sounds like what I've been reading in Bob Woodward's book for the, the last couple of days. In fact, some of the words sound like the way Woodward quotes Chief of Staff John Kelly, off the rails, other ones talking about rants and impulsiveness. One difference, this is anonymous. When Bob Woodward's book comes out, the names are there of the people who are saying it. But I think that what we just saw was uh, an extraordinary sense of the president trying to take control of the moment, a rebuttal, and going after what is an extraordinary uh, even though it's anonymous, it is an extraordinary piece in the New York Times that really backs up 
Bob Woodward's book. And he is somebody who, probably rightly so, believes that he is his best spokesperson. And you can just see a scenario where, as Caitlin was saying, he was a little bit late reading this and saying, I'm doing this myself. You'd find me an article with all of our accomplishments, went out there and just ticked him. I was word salad of all of the things that he wanted everybody to know uh, that he claims that the administration has done, obviously mostly on the, on the economic side, uh, because he is so clearly enraged, understandably, about the fact that somebody wrote this and more importantly, the content of it. And the other thing is I've been, as Caitlin has, and I'm sure we all have been texting back and forth with current and former Trump officials about who could this possibly be. If you read deep into it, the focus is on conservative principles and on things like, you know, free minds, free markets, free people, that those are things that the president ran on, but isn't actually, it, it isn't, doesn't run through his veins like a true conservative. And deep in it talks about the lessons of John McCain and also a lot about Russia and national security, which leads me and others I've been talking to to believe that it is probably somebody who is focused on national security in some realm in the administration, because that seems to be the focus here. And it does seem to be more of a traditional, forgive me, establishment yeah. Republican who joined the administration.